So here is a picture of a nucleus opened up, and you see the three quarks buried inside one of them. And the strong force that binds the quarks together was shown here by these little wiggly lines to give the impression of the, the things really being gripped. Now, this force is so strong that it leaks out very slightly. We show this on the outside here and grips the individual neutrons and protons together. So it's that very strong force, rooted in the quarks, that holds the nucleus together and resists that outward thrust that we saw the demonstration of. So that's three of the forces, gravity, electromagnetic forces, and now the strong force. The strong force only acts in and around the nucleus. You don't feel it at long distances, though the fact that we're still sitting here happily tells us that something's going on inside. And so now I come to the fourth, and thankfully the final force. It's called the weak force. It's not really weak, it's just weak in comparison with that strong one. But it's the force that manifests itself in radioactivity. That rock is undergoing radioactive decay, and you're hearing the effect of this fourth force with this Geiger counter. In fact, this little demonstration is showing you all four forces at once because here's gravity and my hand stopped it because the electromagnetic forces make my hand solid and get in the way the strong force is at work because it's not exploding it's being held together and there's the weak force you're listening to it now that's a demonstration of all four forces in fact all four forces are at work all the time when you walk to school when you're walking down the street here, sitting here around the room, all four forces are in operation. Gravity is pulling you down. The solid floor, electromagnetic force, is stopping you sink right through to the middle. The strong force is keeping your nuclei together. And the weak force is causing radioactivity. For example, what's going on in the sun? The weak force is part of that. So all four forces are operating all the time, everywhere. So. What we've got is this modern picture that the whole of the universe is driven just by the four forces. Now comes the question, but how do they actually work? I mean, let's just think a moment. We started off the talk, I was right there in the roof of the theatre. The Earth was down here. How did the Earth know that I was up there to be pulled down? Now, our modern ideas are that something goes between these particles as they move around, that an agent transmits the information, a carrier of the force. Let me give you some examples of what appear to be forces acting at a distance. There's a beautiful little thing here. It looks like a toy, but it, in fact, it's a historic scientific instrument. And I want you to look at the little black diamonds inside here. Now, at the moment, they're sitting quite still. And if Bryson turns on this lamp over the other side here, I can perform magic. You see, by moving that card, I can make those things move around without touching them. Just watch. And if I move the card back again, they will gradually slow down. Now that's magic, right? I made the things move around without touching them. Let's look at this demonstration another way. Let's look at this Bryson special behind me. This is a bicycle wheel whose spokes are made of elastic bands. Now, Bryson shined the lamp on it. What happens is that the wheel very gradually begins to move. Nobody's touching it, it's beginning to move. A force must be acting on it. Now, what's going on is that elastic, when you warm it up, it actually contracts. And the elastic on one side where the light is shining is contracting and pulling differentially across the wheel and making it start spinning round. So you're seeing this apparent action at a distance. What is actually happening is that heat is being transmitted to it. So an agent is going along. Thanks, Bryson. <laughs> now, our best theories, indeed, today suggest that something goes from one to the other. And the something are little particles. In fact, the first demonstration, when we shone the lamp that my card was obstructing, the moment I removed the card, the light from the lamp was shining on those little discs and made it rotate around. 
And so little particles of light were going from one to the other and transmitting the force. In fact, we believe that all of the forces work this way, that there are hidden agents that travel between one bit and the next and make forces happen. And we can demonstrate that here in the room now. And for this, I'm going to need a special floor brought in. So here's the floor on which we're going to demonstrate the action of the forces in modern theory. And we're going to have two chairs, and we're going to need two volunteers. I need two people of very similar weight and height. Could, could you two come down, probably? Hi, what's your names? Hi, would you like to sit on this side and your... Toby, you sit on the other side. Now, place them very carefully facing each other. Feet on, off the ground on there. Right, now, you're initially quite still. If you hold that, what I'm going to ask you to do is gently throw it across the other side and then you throw it back and let's see what happens. Okay? Let's go. Gently. <laughs> okay, stop. Thank you. Right, you've got to bring yourself back. <laughs> Give it a second go. So what you see is happening is that as the ball goes backwards and forwards, they start moving apart as if a force is acting on them. OK? Give it a go. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> So that is what we believe is going on. We believe that all of the forces involve the exchange of particles. If you were looking at the demonstration there from far, far away without your spectacles, what you would have seen would apparently have been two boys in chairs sitting quite happily, spontaneously moving apart from each other. Of course, when you were able to look at it very closely, you saw that what was causing that movement apart, that force between them, was the ball going backwards and forwards. That ball was like the particle carrying the force. Now, that's an incomplete demonstration because it only shows repulsion. But attraction also, we believe, happens this way. Now, it's not just a case of believing. In the case of the electromagnetic force, we've actually seen the agent, the particle that gets exchanged. It's a little bundle of light, which we call a photon. Now, what about the other forces, the weak force of radioactivity and the strong force? They also have little particles that transmit them. But to find out and see those particles, what we've got to do is to go back to those very first moments when the force has ruled. It's only under the conditions of the extreme heat of the first billionth of a second of the Big Bang that we have the hope of seeing the force carriers of all of the forces acting with equal strength and equal vigour. So what we've got to do is to recreate these incredibly hot conditions that were present just before matter began and do it in the laboratory. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, what's heat? Well, heat has got many forms, but one of them is all the bits and pieces whirling around and bashing into each other very violently. And it's that that we're going to do. We'll build a big accelerator to accelerate particles to almost the speed of light and then we'll clash them together, head on, very violently, to recreate the sort of conditions of that original heat. And it's in those experiments that we have the chance of seeing those particles that carry all of the forces. Now, first of all, let's get the idea across of what's involved in clashing beams of particles together. So, we're going to need to set this up, and I think what we ought to do is to remove, first of all, this very valuable device that's here on the uh, tabletop. And Bryson has dressed specially for this demonstration in his CERN duty physicist t-shirt. Thank you, Bryson. OK, right. Can I have two volunteers? Right. Well, I think you two are in the safest seats because everyone's got spectacles on around you. Hello. What's your name? Rebecca. Right, Rebecca. If you will hold this gun over here, and you're? Matthew. Matthew. OK. You come over and stand on this cross just here, and this is your well, this is your particle accelerator, and you've got your own particle accelerator over this side. Now, let's make sure you're all standing at the right place and that I'm safely out of it. Right, there's a, a ring here that is the sort of target. What I want you to do, we're going to power this up in a minute. When I say go, see if you can fire both of your accelerator particles through that ring, and if we're lucky, some of them might hit each other. Okay, let's go. 